All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? It's Nick here, back at it again with another adventure for you guys. This time, we're heading out to Portugal, a country that's bursting with history, culture, and let me tell you, some seriously stunning landscapes. We're talking ancient castles, beaches that'll blow your mind, cities buzzing with life and food. Oh man, the food. You guys are gonna be drooling just watching this. This is Trek Tales, the channel that brings the world to you, and trust me, you don't wanna miss a single beat of this Portuguese adventure. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button for the algorithm, and ring that bell so you know exactly when we drop a new video. Let's do this. First stop, Lisbon, the capital city that just pulsates with this electric energy. You walk down these narrow cobblestone streets, past these pastel-colored buildings covered in those iconic blue tiles, and you're instantly transported back in time. We're talking centuries-old history here, guys. You can feel it in the walls, in the air, even in the coffee you drink. And speaking of coffee, we gotta talk about the food scene in Lisbon. From those little hole-in-the-wall cafes serving up the most amazing pastries to Michelin star restaurants pushing culinary boundaries, Lisbon's got it all. You could spend a week here just eating and not even scratch the surface. But hey, we're here to explore, so let's hop on one of those iconic yellow trams. Those things are like the lifeblood of the city, and let them rattle us up those hills to get a panoramic view. Trust me, the view from up there, it's pure magic. Lisbon's called the City of Seven Hills for a reason, and let me tell you, those hills make for some seriously epic views. You climb up to places like the Castelo de São Jorge, this ancient Moorish castle overlooking the city, and you're greeted with this panoramic vista that just stretches on forever. The red-tiled roofs, the Tagus River shimmering in the sun, the distant sound of Fado music drifting on the breeze, it's enough to make you want to just sit there and soak it all in. And speaking of Fado music, you can't come to Lisbon without experiencing a live performance. It's this soulful, melancholic music that's woven into the very fabric of Portuguese culture, and it's something that'll stay with you long after you leave. Lisbon is a city that stays with you, a place that gets under your skin and into your heart. It's a city that begs to be explored, to be experienced, to be lived. All right, guys, after conquering the vibrant streets of Lisbon, we're hopping on a train and heading north to Porto, a city that's a little rough around the edges, but in the best way possible. It's a city that wears its history on its sleeve with a certain grittiness that just draws you in. And let's be real, we're here for one thing, port wine. This city is practically synonymous with the stuff and for good reason. Those steep, narrow streets leading down to the Douro River, they're lined with these ancient port wine cellars, each one with a story to tell. We're talking about centuries-old traditions, families passing down their craft from generation to generation. You step inside one of these cellars, and the smell of oak barrels and fermenting grapes just hits you like a warm hug. And then, you taste it that rich, complex flavor, and you understand why port wine is considered one of the world's finest drinks. Now, no trip to Porto is complete without crossing the Dom Luis I Bridge. This iconic double-decker metal arch bridge, it's like the Eiffel Tower of Porto. You can walk across the top, get a bird's-eye view of the city, and let me tell you, it's a photographer's dream. On one side, you've got the Ribera, Porto's historic center, a UNESCO World Heritage Site with its colorful houses stacked on top of each other, and on the other side, you've got Vila Nova de Gaia, home to all those amazing port wine cellars. But honestly, the best way to experience the Douro River is to just hop on one of those traditional Rabelo boats. These boats, they used to transport the port wine down the river from the vineyards, and now they offer these leisurely cruises that give you a whole new perspective on the city. The sun setting over the Douro, the wind in your hair, a glass of port wine in hand, it just doesn't get much better than that. Porto you've stolen a piece of my heart. All right, guys, buckle up because we're about to enter a real-life fairy tale. Forget Disneyland, Sintra is the real deal. Imagine rolling hills blanketed in lush greenery and perched on top, insanely beautiful palaces like something out of a storybook. Pina Palace is like if a rainbow threw up on a castle, a mishmash of styles, bright colors, and stunning views. Quinta da Regalera is straight out of an Indiana Jones movie, hidden tunnels, secret waterfalls, and mysterious symbols. Sintra is magical, historical, and Instagram-worthy. Sintra is not just about palaces, even though they're pretty damn impressive. It's also home to this incredible Moorish castle, dating back to the 9th century. Ancient stone walls perched on a hilltop offering panoramic views. And speaking of views, you gotta catch a glimpse of Cabo de Roca. It's the westernmost point of continental Europe where the land drops off into the Atlantic Ocean. But what really makes Sintra special is the atmosphere. 
Maybe it's the fog over the hills or the ancient forests, but there's a definite sense of magic here. Trust me, this place will stay with you long after you leave. Okay guys, get ready for some serious sunshine and good vibes because we're heading south to the Algarve. This is where Portugal turns up the heat, literally. Imagine this, golden beaches, crystal clear waters and dramatic cliffs. It's like a postcard brought to life. You've got Praia da Marinha with its iconic rock formations, Praia de Benaguil with its hidden cave, and Praia da Rocha with its lively atmosphere. Whether you're looking to relax, catch waves, or explore, the Algarve has it all. If you're looking for a dose of vitamin D and relaxation, the Algarve is calling your name. The Algarve isn't just about lounging on the beach, it's an adventurer's paradise. Kayak through caves, surf epic waves, and hike dramatic clifftop trails. Get your adrenaline pumping with water sports, explore hidden coves by boat, or go dolphin watching. Rent a kayak and explore the caves and grottos. Paddle through narrow passages, discover hidden beaches, and marvel at incredible rock formations. It's like exploring another world, an unforgettable experience. Hike the Seven Hanging Valleys Trail, a stunning coastal path with panoramic views. The views are worth every step. The Algarve has it all, beaches, sunshine, adventure, and a laid-back vibe. Whether you want to relax, explore, or push your limits, the Algarve has something for everyone. All right, guys, get ready to be transported to a lush paradise because we're heading to Madeira, the island of eternal spring. Imagine this, volcanic peaks piercing the clouds, waterfalls cascading down verdant cliffs, and colorful flowers blooming year-round. It's like stepping into a tropical jungle, but with a European twist. Madeira is all about nature. It's about exploring hidden levadas, these ancient irrigation channels that snake through the mountains offering breathtaking views and some pretty epic hikes. You can wander through laurel forests, hike to stunning viewpoints like Pico do Arriero, and marvel at the sheer diversity of flora and fauna. One of the coolest things about Madeira is its unique microclimates. You can be hiking through a cloud forest in the morning, sunbathing on a black sand beach in the afternoon, and enjoying a glass of local wine with a view in the evening. It's like experiencing multiple destinations in one, and it's what makes Madeira so special. But Madeira isn't just about pretty flowers and delicious wine. This island is also an adventurer's playground. We're talking about canyoning down waterfalls, paragliding over volcanic landscapes, and surfing some pretty impressive waves. One of the most unique experiences you can have in Madeira is tobogganing down the streets of Funchal in a wicker basket. Madeira is a place that truly has it all. It's got the lush landscapes, the adventure, the culture, and the relaxation. Madeira is an island that will capture your heart. All right, guys, Coimbra. This place is like stepping into a time machine. We're talking centuries-old university, libraries stacked with ancient texts. It's a history buff's dream, and you can feel it in the atmosphere, you know? It's like this energy, this weight of knowledge just hanging in the air, and the university itself is like a city within a city. We're talking sprawling courtyards, grand halls, these incredible views from the top of the hill. Seriously, it's breathtaking. I mean, imagine studying here, surrounded by this kind of history, this legacy of learning. It's inspiring, man. You've got to see the library, Biblioteca Joanina. It's insane. We're talking floor-to-ceiling bookshelves, intricately carved wood, this golden glow from the sunlight streaming through the windows. It's like something out of a movie, like Harry Potter or something. And it's not just about the looks, man. This library holds some of the rarest, most valuable books and manuscripts in the world. It's like a treasure trove of knowledge, just waiting to be explored. Trust me, Coimbra will blow your mind. Now, Coimbra isn't just about the university, even though it's a huge part of its identity. The city itself is this maze of narrow, winding streets, these colorful buildings, and hidden squares just waiting to be discovered. And the vibe here is so chill, so laid back. It's a nice change of pace from the hustle and bustle of Lisbon or Porto. You can just wander around, grab a coffee at a local cafe, and soak up the atmosphere. We stumbled upon this little restaurant tucked away down one of these side streets, and the food was unbelievable. I'm talking authentic Portuguese cuisine, family recipes passed down through generations. It was so good, we actually went back there twice. So yeah, Coimbra is definitely worth adding to your Portugal itinerary. It's got history, culture, amazing food, and this really cool, youthful energy. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. 
Okay guys, Evora, this place is like a time capsule. We're talking Roman ruins, medieval walls, cobblestone streets. It's like stepping back centuries. And the craziest part, it's all incredibly well-preserved. Right in the heart of the city, you've got this Roman temple, the Templo Romano de Evora. It's over 2,000 years old and it's still standing. I mean, think about that for a second. You're looking at something that was built by the Romans, something that has survived wars, earthquakes, everything. It's mind-blowing. And it's not just the temple. Evora is full of these little reminders of its Roman past. You've got ancient walls, remnants of a forum, even pieces of Roman roads still visible today. It's like walking through an open-air museum. The whole city has this really cool, mysterious vibe, like there are secrets hidden around every corner. And you know me, I love a good mystery. But Evora isn't just about the Roman stuff. It's also got this amazing medieval center with narrow, winding streets, whitewashed houses, and these beautiful churches. We spent hours just getting lost in the maze of streets, discovering little squares, hidden cafes, and these cool artisan shops. It's the kind of place where you can just wander aimlessly and stumble upon something amazing. One of the highlights was definitely the Capella dos Osos, the Chapel of Bones. Yeah, you heard that right, a chapel made entirely of human bones. It's definitely a little creepy, but also strangely beautiful and thought-provoking. And of course, no trip to Evora is complete without trying the local food and wine. We had this incredible dinner at this little family-run restaurant, and the flavors were out of this world. So, yeah, Evora is definitely worth a visit. It's a place that will stay with you long after you've left. All right, guys, the Azores. This place is unlike anywhere I've ever been. We're talking volcanic islands in the middle of the Atlantic, lush green landscapes, dramatic coastlines. It's like another planet, and the volcanic activity is everywhere. We're talking craters, hot springs, these steaming fumaroles. It's like something out of a National Geographic documentary. It's both beautiful and a little bit intimidating at the same time. One of the coolest things we did was hike up to this volcanic crater lake. The views from the top were insane. This turquoise blue lake surrounded by these steep volcanic cliffs. It was like something out of a dream. And the air here is so fresh, so clean. It's like you can feel your lungs thanking you for bringing them here. It's the perfect place to disconnect, recharge, and just be present in the moment. But the Azores are more than just volcanoes. The ocean is a huge part of life here and there's so much to see and do. We went whale watching, and it was incredible. Seeing these massive creatures up close in their natural habitat was an experience I'll never forget. And the diving and snorkeling here is supposed to be amazing too. I'm not really a water person myself, but even I was tempted to give it a try. The water is crystal clear, and there's all sorts of marine life to see. One thing I wasn't expecting was the food. It's surprisingly good. We're talking fresh seafood, locally grown produce, and these amazing cheeses. I even tried this dish called Cozido das Fernas, which is basically a stew cooked underground using volcanic heat. It was surprisingly delicious. So, yeah, the Azores are definitely worth adding to your bucket list. It's a place that will surprise you, inspire you, and leave you wanting more. All right, we're cruising down the coast from Lisbon, sun on our faces, wind in our hair. Metaphorically, of course, we're still editing on an airplane. But trust me, Cascais is all about that breezy seaside life. This place is like Lisbon's cooler, more laid-back cousin, you know? We're talking cobblestone streets winding past pastel-colored houses, balconies overflowing with flowers, the scent of salt air and fresh seafood everywhere you turn. It's the kind of place that makes you want to ditch the itinerary, grab an espresso, and just wander. And that's exactly what we did. Got lost in the maze of narrow alleys, stumbled upon hidden courtyards, felt the sand between our toes on the beach. This town is all about those little moments, those unexpected discoveries that make a trip unforgettable. You feel me? So if you're looking for that perfect mix of history, culture, and beach vibes, Cascais is calling your name. Trust me, this town is a straight-up mood booster. Cascais isn't just about soaking up the sun. This place is steeped in history. Ancient fortresses overlook the Atlantic, grand mansions whisper tales of a bygone era, and museums packed with art and artifacts. Don't miss the Museo Conde de Castro Guimares, and check out Boca do Inferno or Hell's Mouth. The views are seriously epic. Cascais is more than just a pretty face, it's got depth and stories, you'd be crazy to skip it. Buckle up, we're diving into Braga's rich history and culture, one of Portugal's oldest cities, where Roman ruins meet Baroque churches. An open-air museum, every corner steeped in tradition, stunning churches and centuries-old monasteries everywhere. Don't miss the Braga Cathedral dating back to the 12th century, a mix of Romanesque, Gothic, and Renaissance styles. 
the showstopper, Bomb Jesus de Monte, a massive staircase with statues and fountains leading to a breathtaking church. The view from the top, worth every step. Now before you think Braga is all about religion and ancient history, let me tell you, this city knows how to have a good time. We're talking buzzing cafes, lively bars and restaurants serving up some of the most delicious food in Portugal. And don't even get me started on the Vinho Verde, the local wine that's as refreshing as a dip in the ocean. One thing that really struck us about Braga was the energy. This city is young, it's vibrant, and it's got this infectious energy that'll make you want to dance in the streets. So, if you're looking for a city that's got it all, history, culture, food, nightlife, Braga needs to be on your list. And there you have it, folks. Portugal in all its glory. From the bustling streets of Lisbon to the serene beaches of the Algarve, from the historic cities of Braga and Evora to the volcanic landscapes of the Azores, this country has something for everyone. Seriously, we only scratched the surface here. Portugal is a country that begs to be explored, with hidden gems tucked away in every corner. So what are you waiting for? Book that ticket, pack your bags, and get ready for an adventure. But before you do, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And while you're at it, smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. Because trust me, we've got some epic journeys planned. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining me on this incredible journey through Portugal. Until next time, keep exploring, keep dreaming, and keep those travel vibes alive. Peace out.